Oh, that's funny. Hey guys, welcome to the Pernicious Chronicles Grimshaw's Tavern uh, series where we talk about a bunch of different things, and tonight is not going to be any other exception. However, I can see we already have our first technical glitch. Um, so tonight I have Carsey joining me, however my video is not here. <laughs> it's shown two videos of you, brother. It's, oh no. Yeah, it's funny. It's Hello. like I, I minimized it. <laughs> oh, this is classic. Classic. I don't think we can ever start a stream. It's the curse of something. Uh, or Chronicle. Just every small. So just some, some one small. It's, it's, it's always something. Um, so yeah, so this is Grimshaw's Tavern. Uh, tonight, we are going to talk about a couple of different things. One being the economy, the current state of the economy, 57 years after the Dragon Onslaught. And the island of Chot, which Carsey was so gracious to, bleh, gracious to design for us. So, with that being said, I'm going to finally get my camera working, and we can get this started. All right, so, uh, the economy. I know we touched on it briefly last night, sort of, uh, in the last episode. Um... It is in shambles, complete shambles. The gold, copper, silver, uh, what do you want to call it, framework that Dungeons & Dragons set up does not work for this world. Everything's more based on skills, survival, food, uh, any kind of resources like that, including other types of metals like steel, iron. Um, what I think that's, a, that's the main two. So, with that being and said, labor. like skilled labor. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was going for. It kind of like encompassed the whole skill things. Um, so, one of the things that I was actually thinking about, and I wanted to get your input on this, is steel itself. Uh, I'd originally thought about making like steel coins, but then that wouldn't make sense. So, I started brainstorming on turning it into like pounds of steel like you bring in uh, a shield or like what you guys did with turning in a sword and that'll get you so far like you know that that might get you a suit of metal if you give him two swords he keeps one for himself and then he uses the sword to uh, melt it down and make whatever armor type thing uh, yeah that was good but I would like to say um I liked how earlier when you were talking to like the innkeeper, I think, and she was like, "I like jewelry instead." So I like how accommodating to each and like some NPCs will want different things. Yes, and that was that's actually where I was going to go to next because that would be more of the blacksmith, um, but even like the fisherman could use metal as well. So that is correct. That's kind of why I did that whole jewelry thing. Because like. <laughs> walk up to a bakery and throw as many swords as you want at them. Like, what are they going to do with them? <laughs> and, you know, in, in, like, say you want information, and you go out to the street, and you find this guy, um, this homeless guy, that says, you know, and he's starving. So, you want all the information, give him food. So, yes, it would be situational based. Um, but then it could also be labor based, like you brought up. Like, what, what would be some good ideas for the labor base? Other than a, like a blacksmith or something like a, a farmer, because clearly he's gonna be like, "Oh, you want to stay here for a night? Go plow my field." Um, espionage, murder, um, just things that like normal people wouldn't be able to do because we're not normal. Because why is imagine like some D and D characters? Most of them aren't normal people. They're like extra people who were designed to do things that normal person wasn't supposed to do for them. So. Things like that. Like, go find out if my wife is cheating on me or whatever. Like, that, could, <laughs> and I'll give you uh, 12 a, a week stay in my inn. If, like if only Utar had that, <laughs> that option. <laughs> if you want to know the answer to that one, guys, hey, you should watch the stream. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, that's a lot of good, like, with the economy. But if you're out adventuring, if your character's out adventuring and stuff, what kind of resources are you looking for? Because clearly food is like one of the best resources. So 
I guess that would be my question is what what would you look for when you're out and about like what are some things because clearly you know I, I threw out this whole huge pile of gold and silver these statues made of solid copper and you guys didn't even blink at them uh it depends from character to character i must say like for example mina i know she's looking for a different kind of plant in life that she's much more interested in and uh Tilly and Bellfire are much more like treasure driven. That's why they have a bag of infinite stuff full of <laughs> coins. Uh, I'm I'm a weird person. I like uh, I like artifacts and things like that that I wouldn't normally find, or information. And like uh, yeah, information goes more with Ethan. Ethan's always looking for books and same goes same goes with me. Like they're looking for knowledge. That's what they're looking for. Uh, but for currency wise, I leave that kind of up to Tilly and Bellfire because they like ransacking every small thing. True. And, you know, when it comes to steel and iron, hopefully they, they gather that concept and kind of take that versus taking gold and stuff like that. Well, I was going to say gems actually wouldn't be a bad idea because it goes like you can use it to make jewelry like you did or like uh, you gave the necklace to the innkeeper. So with it being this, like I said, this very um, unstable economy. It, it's really kind of left open. You know, you can't just open up the book and say, okay, you're going to pay 15 gold for a long sword. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot more to it. So it's a lot to keep up with as well. Um, I was just wondering if you had any ideas on that, ki that kind of thing, as far as like what you could look for. Mm. I think the I think we already have it. Like basic basic metals is going to be the big one. I don't I can't think of anything too extravagant outside of that. Uh, I wish I could give you more, but I can't off the top of my head. No, nope, and it's perfectly fine because it makes sense what you you were talking about. Um, <laughs> it, it it makes sense in regards to that. Uh, Mina's looking for. The different types of herbs and stuff and then you can eventually start getting into the whole potion thing too that you can use as currency oh yeah that's a good one too then think of that so um oh hide hides another one goodness gracious i cannot think of that uh like animal skins and whatnot which i think i think karsi is the only one that's taken any kind uh, of hide but like i did it for a cosmetic thing that i could use as a tool because i always like my characters to have cloaks because they're just so dead useful yeah fair enough but I just thought of that because I was thinking about his, his cloak and like feathers and stuff like that. Fair enough. Um, so I'm actually going to write that one down so I can remember that because you never know what kind of hide and all that kind of fun stuff. Maybe. Bone. Bone would be a good one too. Yeah. Anything you can use for uh, making tools and stuff. Yeah. So with that being said, I'm going to probably come back to this. But uh, I want to I want to hear what you got on what you created on chat, actually. So, just to finalize some things, just gotta ask a few questions. Okay. So chat is a, it's a relatively like isolated island, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it is. It okay. it truly is. So when things become isolated in the world, it allows like weird things like flora and fauna wise to like spread upon it. So, um, I kind of like the idea of having like dinosaurs and stuff on this island because of there would just be nothing to like fight with them and so for example i have i have i have a full-on description for it but the first paragraph is for much of existence chat has been an isolated island inhabited by a sparse amount of humans the isolation led to a spectacular amount of flora fauna to flourish even during the dragon war which was bird only fed nutrients into soil that grew back even more robust uh so you have like this isolated island with only for most of it We'll get into that later. Just like tribal humans, There's not a lot of technology. Like it's not. It's very behind. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. perfect sense. So, would they have? Um, would they use more like we were just talking about, like bone uh, oh. and hides and stuff? Oh yes. Okay, but so they wouldn't have like any metal works or anything. Well, let me explain something. Like Go for it. Well, you said you, there has to be a town, right? At least one place for there to be a port. Well, I mean, that was the idea, but that doesn't necessarily have to be one now. Well, I, I have an idea, but you, I want to run it by you. You might not like it because it might not fit in the flavor of your world. But uh, how about like a small, like a city? Is a city okay? Well, let me explain how, if you let me explain how the city becomes into existence. Go for it. So it's a rather 
isolated island. And so one day, uh, five in the description, five beings appeared in the island's beach. And it was Rock Sasha, which are these demon cat things that like influence people and things like that. Yep. And they like brought knowledge and magic to the island and let them. And uh, since they're, they're immortal, over time they basically made themselves a little opulent city that they hid with their magic from the outside world even further on top of the island's isolation. So that's the only reason why I would think a city would be able to grow and flourish in this world. If that makes sense? Is it hidden? It did. Um, now, would it be hidden to outsiders? Um, yes, because uh, the Fraxasha, uh, in the in the in the trend up in the uh, um, uh, what's it called? Monster Ming can cast major image and, and invisibility. So I kind of would imagine they would have like this invisible dome around them. And then they can use command person to influence the minds of the sailors around that come to the island to trade with them, yes, but to keep the island a secret just for their own benefit. Does that make sense? Yeah, makes sense. Because they're, cause they're like manipulative and puppet masters, basically. Gotcha. Um, so definitely dinosaurs. Uh, what else you got on there? So, Because <laughs> somebody yeah. said zombies. <laughs> I did. Don't worry. I gotta, I gotta go even more into it. So, since you have such a sparsely populated place, um, yes, there are some humans inside the city. There's a lot of humans actually now, technically, compared to the outside of the city. Um, but to get things done in the city, you need work. And the Versace are really good with the necromancy. Yeah. So they would just use the dead uh, for much of their labor. But the conflict comes in when you have the very little natives who didn't fall for the Rexasha's charm to like join the city, see that as like an abomination to nature. Gotcha. So they have like this nice little resistance trying to impede any and all progress of the city of Gull, which I have named it the port city of Gull. Sorry, there was some kind of banging outside the window. <laughs> oh, it's not all right. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is that? Um, I like it. Um, now, I guess my question is, if, if this city is hidden, would anybody actually try to come there to try and trade with them, or would they just bypass it? They would love, they want to come trade there, because um, the Rikstas are known for, like, hoarding and, like, creating gold and other jewels, and they love living in opulence. So it's an opulent city where... They want people to come trade with them to give them more, you know, slave work and food for the humans and whatnot, because they can't create food no matter how good their power is. So you have this hidden, a literal hidden gem of a city. Gotcha. Now, instead of making it a city, um, what if we scaled it down a little bit? Yeah. And because there's no really like large scale cities mm -hmm. that you guys know of. Um, so it could work, and it could grow into something a lot larger, uh, which would require the land and the hunting of dinosaurs. So that could be a, a plot quest later on, or a plot hook, quest hook, whatever the hell you want to call it. But yeah, so I'm perfectly down with that. That actually sounds pretty damn good. And I have a Google Doc with some more description and some more flavor text for you. I will send to you. Okay. Um, now, you know this is going to go on the website, right? That's fine. <laughs> and this could very easily be, because uh, you said it, it first. It's, how long has the city been here? Let's ask that question. Uh, that's a question I uh, I would have to say before the Dragon War, because one of like the big selling points for them uh, I've had was, uh, excuse me, one second. Uh, no, you're good. One of the quotes for the leader of the city watch was, we have survived the scorch of dragon fire. This spark of anarchy shall be extinguished e easily. So I would like them to be here before the dragon war because I would think you would need time to build a bigger like settlement. Yes. So that's, that's. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking plot hooks here and, and trying to give it a little bit more, uh, I guess, flavor and history and stuff like that. Now you say they're hidden. What was the other than the dinosaurs? What was the particular reason they would go hidden? Uh, well, <laughs> this is part of the Rexasha lore. Um, is that they like um, they like being kings of their own small kingdoms. Like they're just very egotistical animals. Yes, they just don't. They just want to live their own life in pleasure how they want. 
and they would need servants to do that and they would just chose the, the humans of this island so they would have to like go to war or anything because they're not they're, they are very powerful but they're not strong enough to take on a whole kingdom i gotcha um and there's and there's no one to oppose them on this island that's why they chose it uh now for the most part yes there's yes okay would there have been anybody to oppose them before they took power and they had to um, quell it uh no no they just they would just use their magic to dominate the land Fair enough. that's why it's so like no get the fuck off with the natives get, get out with the natives is what they're saying i didn't mean to cuss there i'm sorry <laughs> we just had this conversation man. <laughs> what's wrong with you uh ironically i think it, it's funny because somebody came onto the stream and they said something in chat and it says message deleted so it wasn't anything good because <laughs> stream elements kind of takes care of that, that stuff but anyway i digress um so yeah so I'm, I'm actually pretty good with that i like the uh the flavor for it it leaves it open for other things in the future um and you guys could get stranded there so that would be fun um i liked and also i have two factions which i'll read more about and then so i also left it up to the players on their own moral beliefs as to where they want to do there if they if they wanted to if we wanted to stay there to like do something else if you wanted to play with the diversity of the island does that make sense yeah okay now okay so here's a, a very good question as far as the lore mm -hmm. um because you know you have sailors you have the the one ship that you know of uh going to and fro would they know who's actually in charge like is it common knowledge or is it just like... yeah it's it... go ahead they would know because the, the city is ruled by a count by the five by the five demons that's the council of the five rakashas so they would they would know it's not a it's not a puppet thing okay so they make their presence known i'm just i'm, I'm thinking about this whole thing how i can spin this into another quest. because who, who would they need to hide themselves from on the island that's so isolated that they've hidden themselves i gotcha so did are we are these the same five that survive the yeah. dragon onslaught yeah yeah they just they didn't survive it they just ran away from it basically they just hid they just hid, hid themselves from it. yeah interesting so dinosaurs rakasha and zombies and humans yep any other races uh i thought about it but i just didn't know if i was going to add races it'd be like an insectoid race kind of or like a merfolk race because they're on an island i could i just didn't know how to fit it in gotcha well the isle of serpents is uh pretty close well not not super close but they don't pose a threat they have their own thing going hmm. i like it though so going back to the economy real quick let me ask okay. you this um for the foreseeable future it's definitely still going to be built off of skills uh, and other resources. However, it's going to start to slowly change once towns and cities start to rebuild. Uh, Levers tried to rebuild, but it seems like the party wanted to burn it down. We did want to. Okay, the sky wanted to burn it down for some reason. <laughs> um, how would you introduce the economy back in? Um... You know what? Then I would use steel coins. That'd be actually really good right then and there. If you were trying to rebuild the economy, take something that has value, which is steel here, and then like give it in a currency form. Now, that's actually a pretty good idea there. Um, so you could use like steel has the uh, the value of gold, yeah, and and iron has the value of silver. Yeah, and then you have. Uh, and then you could just keep copper, copper, because that's, copper's... Yeah. That's exactly what I was about to say, actually. That you could keep copper like it is. So, technically, copper has more value than gold right now. Indeed it does. Hmm. Interesting. We yeah. might have to start doing that, figure out how we can do that. That's the plan for the economy. Economic systems. Gold, no value. <laughs> But then the question becomes, do you take the steel and do you melt it down in the armor? 
they, that's that's the thing. Get That's why it's still a nice balance between the two. It's why it's not immediately here's a new economy. It's it's a tr nice transition between the two. So somebody's out there making steel coins and uh, iron coins so they can distribute them. But uh, so like with with gold, I'm trying to think like what's the payoff? Like what what do they get? Like uh. Let's, that, let's say, that's that's like the question of economics altogether. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Uh, it's just it's just a uh, it's just basically just a promise. Like so I promise I did this much work with this. So let's let's look at it like this. Okay, so if 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 we go that route, and somebody wants something made, um, that's actually probably what I'm gonna do. I might make steel the same value as gold, but drop gold all the way down. Um, Because, but I might actually have to bump it up because let's say a suit of armor costs you 15, 15 steel to make. Um, but half of that actually has to be melted down into, to make the armor. You might actually end up having to pay 25. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because they have to take, they, they still want to make their profit, but they have to take part of whatever you're giving them to make, to melt it down. Or they can use inferior metals and try to get away with it. Yeah, true. <laughs> they can like, nickel. Hmm. They can use like nickel plated. <laughs> <laughs> it turns green after a while. <laughs> it's like, what the hell did you give me? <laughs> hmm. So most people, yeah. So metal armor is a very hard thing to come by. I have to think about this. You just kill somebody for the armor. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> you have some nice shoes. <laughs> oh man, that's horrible. Okay, so I have a I have a direction to go in now. See how this works out. Um questions, comments, concerns? Um nope, I'm just ready to see what what's what the next episode brings us. Tomorrow. Wednesday, my friend. Is it tomorrow? I, I yeah. keep thinking of games on Thursday. Well, yeah, streaming on Monday and Tuesday <laughs> makes Wednesday get here faster. <laughs> so anyway, um, all right. Uh, what actually? What what's some good topics for the next two Grimshaw's episodes or Grimshaw's Tavern? Uh, some of the moral values of the Lyce Lyceum and uh, why did the Dragon War start? Just some history stuff. Or do you want to keep that for our... Actually, um, depending on how the next episode goes, I can I should probably bring all that to light. Dragon Onslaught. Um, sorry, I'm writing this down. Yeah. I can. Okay, so next episode is definitely going to be about the Lyceum. And maybe... That'll probably be one full episode. And then the, uh, nope, got to put them together. <laughs> got to put the Dragon Onslaught and the Lyceum together. So that's what we'll do. Monday's episode will be Dragon Onslaught and the Lyceum. Good deal? Yes, that's good. And then we'll figure out what we're going to do on Tuesday. Cool. Okay. Thank you for joining me. Always. And you guys have a good night.